Welcome to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week Update uh, podcast here. I am Adolfo Frana. We are on episode 43, and you are... Greg Gloria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. Hey, man, how's hey. it going? Happy Black Friday, huh? Happy Black Friday is right. Do you see how I slipped in the episode number real quick before, you know, totally oh, yeah. out of context? Just because it's, totally I would forget context. it. <laughs> Totally out of context. I'm glad you did. Yeah, man. You're yeah. keeping track. Happy you're keeping Black track. Friday. Happy Black Friday. Happy yes, Black right, Friday. Right. And anyway, I think we have some Black Friday stories. I'm going to interject some in there. So what, let's go into the first story. Facebook makes it official. An like, external advertising network is coming soon. What's going on there, man? Yeah, so this is huge stories. This is breaking today here. Uh, and thanks to, I believe it's GigaOM that, that broke this story. Uh, included in the changes that uh, Facebook recently announced to its privacy and governance policy was an admission that it aggregates and shares data on user activity with advertisers. And Facebook says it plans uh, to, uh, you know, do so not just inside the network, uh, but on external websites as well. So um, wow. how this applies is that they have announced that, they, yes, they are indeed going to better target advertising outside of Facebook for all of you people that use Facebook, right? Um mm. So that means all your likes, your comments, and everything, uh, Facebook has said that they will aggregate that and use that in uh, targeted advertising as well. Um, so this is this all come about like uh, because they went public and the increasing pressure for Facebook to monetize essentially and, and make more mm. than $5 billion. Uh, so if all goes well, they say that they could be in the $10 billion range, essentially doubling their income, what they're doing now in a best case scenario. Um, so well, who this threatens obviously is Google AdWords, right? And uh, Google Ads. Um, and they don't like this one bit, I'm sure. Uh, so this is uh, this is huge news they, that they will be going outside of Facebook, not just internal advertising. They will be going outside of Facebook and uh, actually going external advertising. Uh, you know, building out this either building out or acquiring probably some sort of external uh, advertising network here. So very well, that's, very that's big, big news. news. Yeah, it's huge. Wow. Wow, that's great breaking news. I, I, I was wondering when they were going to kind of do something like that, um, you know, and it, it makes some sense. They have they have a billion people to play around with. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so. it's a lot. Yeah, a ton of data, you know, to to target uh, all you, yes. all of us. Right. All of us, you know. I, I guess I guess we're going to have targeted wall posts now. Yeah, huh? yeah. It kind of validates that whole saying too, right? Is uh, well, hey, if this is free, well, you know, if this is free, then, you know, how is the company making money kind of thing? And everyone is always the old cliche now. Well, it seems like the old cliche now is that, hey, if you don't see the, the product, you are the product, right? Yeah, exactly. And on exactly. Facebook, that is truly the case. We'll see this, how this pans out for uh, Twitter. We shall see as well, right? Yeah, just like any other social network, they have to use its data, which is its value. So yeah, that's, so uh, that's another GigaOM story, Greg. It looks like here. What do we got here? Where well, where's next for uh, Steven Sanofsky? <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about Steven Sanofsky. Yeah. I, I, you know, we're not going to talk about exactly, you know, some of the reasons why he he left, but let, let's let's talk about uh, what uh, his uh, departure, uh, you know, the wake of his departure leaves. You know, mm -hmm. so not only did does uh, you know did Sanofsky champion the design of you know what we call the Windows tablet, uh, you know, by Microsoft, right, mm -hmm. uh, itself, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, kind of ignored that hardware margins are kind of slim yeah and i'm not sure profitability is going to be the same as software <laughs> right um you know i think you know that's kind of interesting because uh you know when the service came out they got a solid keyboard which kind of looks like uh what do you call it, laptop <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so so bad news for hardware partners right so causing conflicts with strategic partners like dell lenovo mm -hmm. hewlett packard intel i mean to name a few mm -hmm. samsung <laughs> you know yeah so i you know that's one thing you know that that i think he left in, in the wake of his departure and also the other thing i, I thought you and i talked about this mm -hmm. is uh you know he he also had the windows division right, right. and he introduced a tablet that ran something called windows rt which you know, it has a low power microprocessor designed to use ARM, mm -hmm. but you know, what about those thousands of software applications he did ignore by running Windows NT? I think right. there's a lot of pissed off people out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let's move on to you know what can he try to do next, right? Right. I think you know if you go to you know uh, you know he could go to you know Google, you know anywhere that needs software development. Think about it, and I think mm -hmm. you had a 
you were thinking about talking about a piece this week. I think you removed it, but mm-hmm. about about Apple needing to kind of take another redesign of its software. But yeah. you know, he go there, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure they would <laughs> welcome him in open arms. What, what about Oracle, huh? Mm-hmm. With Java and uh, <laughs> Linux, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's some interesting paths that you go to. I don't know. What, what do you think? Uh, what, what, so what, so there have been a lot of these them? articles, uh, you know, called the. I'm seeing a lot of this sort of the end of jerks. Um, type of articles that are going around right now, you know, with the with the with the firing of Scott Forrestal and essentially the firing here of Sanofsky because he was forced out. Really, is what happened. Um, mm. Let's look back on his history. Why he was brought into Microsoft? Microsoft was sort of in this horrible hierarchy type of position where they had all these internal departments that were fighting each other. Sanofsky essentially was coming in and, and, and sort of leveled the the earth, sort of so to speak, especially when it comes in terms of uh, Windows, right? Um, right and, and later, which is became sort of phone and and some other stuff and tablets, sort of. Um, he really shook stuff up. He came in and he was sort of the fixer, right? He came in and uh, not there to make friends, that's for sure. And it was you know, um, and got some stuff done. He got a lot of stuff done. I got to admit, you know, in I remember the early days of Build when we were talking or Mix, I should even say, when I mm-hmm. when I was talking to uh, uh, Bill Buxton, the designer, and I was seeing oh, wow. what was pre Metro stuff. Right, it was Metro before Metro was officially released, and right. I saw that the, how serious that they had taken design, and this was all because of Sanofsky, essentially the head, you know, oh, the, the head guy saying, you know, we're going to do this, and also. Um, Joe, uh, Joe Bellafiori also in his design vision mm. as well. And, and, uh, and I'm like, oh, wow. So Microsoft is going to be a force to be reckoned with now because they're finally taking design seriously. And we're seeing the fruits of their labor now with like, you know, this whole Metro of Windows 8 and these tablets and these mm. phone interfaces, mm. right? Which are seriously really incredible, you know, really nice. Uh, uh, the software has, has issues and, and some of the hardware has issues as well, but it was, it's a bold step. As in terms of what Apple needs to do, yeah, they're, they're sort of at that precipice also now where they've kind of hit the ceiling and, and now Johnny Ive is, is sort of in charge now and, and, and uh, that's a separate story. But going back to Sanofsky, as far as what is yeah. his next step, I'm hearing a lot of people say, you know, be, the way he is, he would probably be better suited at a startup or running a startup as a, oh, as sure. a CEO versus going into some enterprise because he doesn't, you know, uh, he bangs heads pretty, you know, sort of like Forstall as well with... He was banging heads with Balmer for a long time, and and the other you know oh, corporate true. corporate heads of uh, of the other divisions, and they just finally had enough. Microsoft lost a lot of good people because of this guy, and a lot of good people left because of this guy on every sort mm. of level: developers, executives, mm. and on every level. He would do really weird things. I mean, if you saw his blog posts, they were like thousands of words long. He would respond to like uh, he directly like uh, respond to like press bloggers, individuals, and sort of rant at them, uh, you know, about this and that. Um, I remember when I went to, uh, what was it, uh, my first build, I believe it was, um, yeah, and I just and they killed Mix too, which was an incredible conference. You know, when oh, he took right, over the right, whole thing, right, 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 huge mistake right. I think by Microsoft. And then I went to build, and I saw this weird hierarchy of PR people, and some of us got to sort of touch the uh, what was the what was the what Surface now um, we, back when it was kind of a prototype. Some of us didn't. Some of us got to take it to our rooms and play with it. Some of us didn't. It was it was really weird how how they were, and they were very hands off, very cagey. All of a sudden, you know, trying to. Emulate Mm. Apple. I mean, I could just go on and on. It just it just got really weird. Uh, so a lot of credit to Sanofsky, and some stuff was just probably not good for Microsoft as well. And I think probably that not good has sort of outweighed. I, I think his usefulness has passed for Microsoft. Let's put it like that. And uh, perhaps like a startup or something like that could use him, a person like him, maybe, to get the ship yeah, right. No. You know. That's a good point. I, I think you know you you bring up some good points there. I think, you know, it's nice hearing the insight that you have with you know on the design side because I, I I agree with you. I mean, you know, if you think about where he started, I think he started right after Vista, right? Yeah, oh, dude, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, let's yeah, look. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about that firebird arising from the ashes. Yeah, yeah. So, I know. I, mean, I know. <laughs> And even now, I mean, I mean enterprises are stuck with Windows 7 for a long time, and they're not moving. They're not going to move to Windows 8 anytime soon. Um, yeah. But it's that interface that we're all used to. Going from that to Metro, it's, it's huge. It's huge. It's cataclysmic for Microsoft. Mm, mm, I see. Okay. Well, 
let's let's move on to the next story. It's your story. Uh, the police raid nine-year-old Pirate Bay girl and confiscate Winnie the Pooh laptop. <laughs> yeah. So this is a Finnish what? story. Yeah. Thanks uh, to Finland's uh, torrent uh, torrent freak writer. Jonas Mikinin. Um, so yeah, an anti-piracy <laughs> company has found itself in the middle of a huge controversy. Their uh, acronym goes CIAPC, CIAPIC. Uh, the company ha- uh, that had the Pirate Bay blocked by ISPs in Finland tracked an alleged file, file share and demanded a cash settlement. However, the internet account holder refused to pay, which escalated things to an unprecedented level, a very weird level. Uh, in response... This week, uh, police raided the home of the nine-year-old suspect and confiscated her Winnie the Pooh laptop. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So essentially, you you know, it was some parents that are not very tech savvy. Their kid is a big pop, you know, pop fan of this singer, you know, some Finnish famous singer. Uh, I I think she knew how to use Pirate Bay and she got a couple songs or some songs. I don't know how many, but she got some songs. And these yeah, these okay. and this freakish, you know, company CIA PC or you know who uh, represents copyright holders, or whatever, just came at these people, and the parents refused to pay the essential the initial letters, thinking it was, you know, sort of uh, preposterous, right? And uh, finally, they knock on the door. They do this like you know police raid. They're asking for money, oh is, and uh, it got really ugly. Um, Obviously, the the star, the pop star, who says she wants nothing to do with this kind of thing, and she, you know, she loves all her nine year old um, fans, and sent them a link to her Spotify, her music on Spotify, if they want to listen to it free, right, via Spotify. <laughs> and uh, and so I I don't know. This is just really just, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, you know. All of these sort of RIAA and all these these really weird type of I don't know, companies. I mean, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, defending this I old mean, model I, or whatever. Yeah, God, that's just totally ridiculous. There's some ridiculous stuff. I think that goes into the ridiculous file of the week, <laughs> yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of regulators, <laughs> no. well, yeah, let's Greg, go right in that. Piece, California, huh? you know, this is big, big news here. You know, here in the Bay Area, we're getting all this, you know, the taxi versus Uber and versus everyone. Actually, oh, taxi versus everyone man. right now. But anyways, Greg, California Please. regulators are finding Uber, Lyft, and Sidecar. Tell us more. What's the deal here? Wow. Oh, this. Thank you, Owen Thomas from Business Insider, who I saw at, at an event the other night, and he he's a pretty smart cookie in itself. Uh, but Lyft and Sidecar, which let uh, any car owner really sign up as drivers to offer rides, right, mm. uh, has received fines of t- upwards of twenty thousand dollars from the uh, uh, California Public Utilities Commission. Um, wow. So basically, these the you know Uber contracts professional limo drivers and maintains that you know they're not subject to the PUC, mm-hmm. which is which regulates drivers, mm-hmm. right? And the commission is saying, oh, no, 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 you guys, you guys are char- charter party car- carriers. So there's this big battle going on, and um, Lyft, you know, mm-hmm. which is another rideshare service that you know builds itself as a f- your friend with a car. So basically, you know, if you find out someone's going somewhere, you could just ask for a lift, and you know, on the way there, they could just drop you off or mm-hmm. wh- whatever that that case is for a f- for a fee, mm-hmm. right? Which is usually cheaper than a taxi. Yeah. It happens to work, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I think those the Lyft ones has those little funny pink, pink yeah. mustaches on the front <laughs> yeah. of the yeah, cars. Cool. I'm always wondering who that is, and I said. Oh, it's Lyft, yeah, man. Yeah. It's Lyft. <laughs> Someone's giving a Lyft. Yeah. So, you know, it, it opens up this whole thing of, you know, the taxi cab drivers are regulated, especially here in San Francisco. They have their own union. And um, they're also regulated in, in San Francisco. But, you know, San Francisco's, I think, taking a little bit different approach than the California PUC. They're trying to figure out how to to use this the new tech world that's really a big powerhouse now in San Francisco to kind of work with them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So... But, you know, taxi cab drivers are just seeing these things as threats uh-huh. and instead of something that they need to maybe eventually move on. I mean, why don't they just develop an app for themselves? I, I mean, you know, there's just like things that just that, that just don't make any sense to me. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, if someone's disrupting your game, well, you know, you don't go sue them, you know, go go compete with them. Yeah. My God. Well, you know, they they are actually this. So San Francisco taxi company is using something called uh, some of them use Cabulous. And another one is oh, called Taxi okay. Magic. But the thing is, is like, uh, so I believe it's Green Cab that uses uh, Cabulous. And then there's another yeah. service uh, that uses like uh, 
taxi magic uh which, which are applications oh, okay. um the thing what i think the taxi drivers are trying to do or the i'm not sure who it is um because there's a difference between the taxi company and the taxi drivers right the, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of yeah. nuances to this this whole story right Right. Taxi companies could care less about customers because they just, or even really the drivers, because for them it's about what getting a cut, right? Of, exactly. Of the fare or exactly. whatever, and uh, for it's really the and for drivers, drivers, it's all it's a whole other deal. I mean, they have to pay for their own right. medallions or rent their medallions or buy their medallions, which are essentially your your ticket to ride uh, to drive uh, taxis in San Francisco, and they're incredibly it's a expensive. Thing too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the medallions are are worth more more home than some homes here in San Francisco. Exactly. And and another thing, the taxi service in San Francisco is pretty atrocious. It's very difficult to get a cab in San Francisco. Um, yeah. Yeah. And as far as Uber, Uber, you know, it, Forum uh, NPR did a really great story uh, the other day on, on this whole thing, and and it was a really eye-opening sort of thing with Uber. Uber actually now has partnered with the taxi company, I believe it was Yellow Cab or something like that, so that you can use, actually use Uber now. Uh, they sort of placated the taxi right, industry now, so you can use Uber now to flag a, ca a taxi, and Uber just takes like a dollar or cut or something like that off the taxi. Which makes right, some right? sense, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's what I would like but, to see. But yeah. even Uber, it's not like they're unregulated or unlicensed or anything like that, because all they are doing is facilitating existing limo companies and limo uh, mm. drivers right and limo drivers right. and limo companies are regulated and do have to go through all kinds of licensing and and this special this and that right and uh right. so so uber is nothing more than a facilitator really uh s sort of like right. a taxi company in that sense right um, i mean it's like it's like an it's an app right <laughs> I mean, that's yeah what it yeah is. right I mean, right so there is no I mean, the, there's this sort of like this this veil of that the you know taxi it seems like the tax i don't know w what the interest is um, by the PUC and, and whatever uh, to try to to paint these these new you know companies who are addressing a problem a real problem in San Francisco through through you know commerce here and and entrepreneurism uh, mm. to 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 fix this this problem of people not able to find either rides or affordable rides you know in San Francisco and sidecar for instance is one of the services and what they provide is something what they call like a commuter service right so yes, essentially it's yes. like yeah whoever's near you it's an unmarked car it could be a plain like you know car you know there's no markings on it no pink mustaches nothing um and it's all donation based right so you come to this yeah, donation I mean, based thing suggest. yeah the suggested price right and not only that yeah. if you're a sidecar driver you also have to go through some things they do a background check on you and this and that so it's not like anything and to their credit too you know as they say it, we have about five thousand people a day doing commuter uh casual commute from the east bay here into san francisco and that's been happening for like over 20 years now right and uh so and commuter commuting services have lasted forever i know people that commute in van pools and things like that from uh, sonoma county into san francisco and they've been doing so for a long time um, so, you know, I don't know all this whole PUC and this argument, I, it's, it just stinks to me. It just, it seems like another, well, I don't know. And they're going to use the scare cool. tactic over and over again. And, you know, I think we, I asked of new tech this week, we saw another uh, service called wheels, which actually, um, <laughs> allows you to actually take a personal car and borrow it, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. unlike, you know, yeah. you know, what some of the other ride share yeah. ones where I'm, or, you know, like, totally. you know, zip car or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. or Scoot. You know, that That's actually that service. actually com that actually competes directly with the taxis if you think about it. Oh yeah, you know, them in too. A way, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know that competes. I, but these other ones that we're talking about today yeah. in this show, they're just facilitators, like you said. I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah, man. yeah. I mean, total totally agree with you on that. Yeah, one. if anything, wow. I mean, the taxi service should should if they're seeing success somewhere else, perhaps then incorporate some of that you know uh, business practice or something like that. But uh, I understand it's difficult for them to move quickly when you have all these, um, you know, government bodies or, or whatever to, to go through and all this red tape. Let's go to the speed round, my friend. Speed round. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, yeah man. So this one is uh, Barclays Bank buys 80, uh, 8,500 Apple iPads in one go. So essentially, you know, Barclays is coming up and they're saying, look, we've, we've, uh, you know, we've vetted all the tablets and, and all these other things, and we're finding this to be a great solution for us. And uh, sure enough, I'm seeing it more and more in, in uh, enterprise now. iPads are infiltrating, and it's wow. it's uh, it's quite wow. an interesting uh, turn of events to see that happen. And I, I think this is just the beginning of a um, a trend that will be uh, you know long lasting. Well, you know, maybe maybe with that previous article, maybe maybe Sanofsky was smart after all. Now, maybe he wanted to protect the enterprise by going with those things. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. But wow, that's pretty cool. So, wow, that that must have been a big bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, they get a discount on that. Yeah, I know. Just, quite you know, a vote of confidence. No, not like the guys off in Jersey who got them off the truck for free, right? <laughs> Yeah, or or a hundred dollars off on uh, Black Friday. Yeah, <laughs> Greg, God forbid you uh, fall down your stairs tomorrow or something. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I would hate to see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Speed round. What's on your Speed Greg? round? Okay, let's, let's go up next. Let's we're, we're talking uh, what, Visa? Visa, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, Anyway, Visa decided to uh, open up its uh, digital gates. Um, so they added about 53 banks and 23 merchants, about which accounts for about 55 million cardholders who now can use a service called V.me, cool. um, which uh, V.me is a wallet service that aims to make it easier for you to pay for online goods. So, you know, this isn't breaking news because PayPal does it, uh, you know, uh, Square does it right now. So it's not a big deal. They all do it. They basically take all your credit cards and aggregate into one service on mobile. Mm. But I think this signifies the old guard knowing that, you know, these guys are eating my lunch. (laughs) I better go go get it. Yeah, I better learn how to make a sandwich too, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I think I think just the signals the shift, which is a good. I think it's a good shift for uh, people like you and I, right? Yeah. yeah and I totally. think that uh, we just need to get. They just need to get on board. The trains left the station, and they better be on it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but right. but I heard uh, there was rumors out there that they'll be also uh, enabling uh, mobile a little bit more with NFC, which hmm. you know we haven't heard too much in this country before. You know, popular in Japan. Yeah. NFC isn't yeah. popular here, so no NFC in the iPhone. No NFC in the iPhone. No. We'll see until no, that happens. So, let's see. <laughs> we'll see. Stick with Android, my friend. <laughs> anyway, okay. Let's go on your speed round. Speed round. Yeah. So DreamWork releases software used for in Guardians. So there's some uh, you know big CGI fancy new movie kids movie called Guardians, all animated mm. and this and that. Um, and they've open sourced the software they used for it. Um, and so what this software does is sort of you know helps you create like the cloud effects and and all these really neat visual effects. So supposedly the interest in DreamWorks releasing this software is such that it becomes a standard in the industry, right? They don't do this out of the goodness of their heart. I, well, perhaps to some extent, right? <laughs> but uh, they're hoping everyone starts using this. They have a platform that they're very familiar with. I'm sure they have developers or designers, whatever, that are very versed in it. And then they could just hit the ground running and just sort of utilize this across the board and perhaps even, uh, you know, provide services for this type of thing. So very interesting move by DreamWorks. And, uh, uh, you know, this isn't the first time these type of entertainment companies have done this type of thing. I know Lucas uh, with some sound stuff and, and a lot of these other I think Spielberg has done this kind of thing too before um a pixar i believe also so good on dreamworks for releasing uh open sourcing this uh uh the software for guardians so greg 7-11s hey, what's his story go, so, hey, well they just got a little bit more crowded man you know um so uh amazon announced a couple months ago that uh they're putting lockers here you know, amazon lockers oh, right. in uh, 7-11s hey. well there's another service that's going to be doing about the same thing it's a smaller locker but they're doing a locker nevertheless mm-hmm. it's called uh, shop runner mm-hmm. um it enables the same thing uh, you know with your prime um membership on amazon you can get free two-day service and that's that's included with locker right mm-hmm. you can still get the same deal yeah. They charge about the same amount of money for a Prime. I think Prime's around seventy, eighty dollars, something like that, mm-hmm. for a year, mm-hmm. um, if you join. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, this this other service, Shop Runner, does the same thing. So, yeah. you know, there's going to be lockers all over the place yeah. at the Seven Eleven. Jeez. Um, in fact, I think even Amazon this last couple of weeks uh, announced that they'll even even going to other stores. You know, um, that will be familiar to us, so that 
you know you could just drop by anywhere but you yeah. know one of the problems that came that came up in this in this article was that uh what if they run out of space <laughs> yeah i know 7-eleven <laughs> is not known for their season, roominess you know? right <laughs> yeah i mean what were they going to start putting them in the uh, men's and women's bathrooms yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, next to the, the slurpee space i could see in the slurpee <laughs> yeah, machine right the slurpee. Yeah, so I, you know with christmas coming up this is going to be interesting test for these type of services so yeah. let's let's uh let's keep an eye on that one maybe at the end of the year we could just summarize that okay man um cool what's next up yeah so tip time tip time tip time, tip time. what do you got there so man? my tip is uh and i gotta thank robert scoble for this one uh so maybe some of you guys Ooh. know he stumbled onto this one it's an ios application called light l-i-g l-i-g-h-t-t two t's people Whoa. light uh what it does it's it's a basically a uh, picture sort of like an instagram application but a little different take on it um i know you're all saying oh, another photo app yes another photo app but this one is really cool in ah. that when you take a photo when you hit that little camera icon to take your picture it takes 10 successive pictures one you know in succession one after the other click 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 oh. click 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 oh, click cool. and then what photo it does app. it sort of stitches it together afterwards and then you get a stop motion type of effect right and it's really, really cool. And then you could share that with your, you know, with Facebook or, or Twitter and uh, also to the general public also if you want or keep it private or email or whatever. Um, but it's really cool. Check it out. L-I-G-H-T-T. -T, uh, very oh, clean wait, interface. Wait, wait. Very special. So does it turn into a GIF or is it just stitch it one frame by one frame next to each other? Uh, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. So what it does is it, it, I believe it creates like an animated, I don't know how they're doing it really. Uh, I'm not mm. sure if it's an animated GIF mm. of some sort or, or something oh, like yeah. that. Or, or if they're That's just cool. playing the, the pictures and suggestion really quickly. I'm not oh, sure how the player is. I, I'm, but uh, anyways, check it out. It's a specialized niche -y kind of thing. Really cool. Uh, I believe it's invite only right now. So if you want to invite, oh, you know, so. give me an email at Adolfo at... Uh, uh, nerdstalker.com <laughs> and i will send you an invite um oh yeah, yeah I see, I, you're posting those things on facebook i noticed on, on your facebook yeah i've been uh, testing it out to see line, so. see how cool this thing is and i really like it so mm. it's nice to yeah, see other people's was. lives you know and uh yeah check it out really cool neat stuff there's great freeway nice. shots great nice. food shots as greg likes to do and uh <laughs> so greg I'm a foodie your tip yes no, and it right. better not be well, food related you know, well, you know, this would help you during Black Friday. So uh, Google uh, just launched for the desktop uh, indoor maps. You could only have gotten it earlier on um, mobile with Android, but now they've released it to the desktop. So, like, if you're planning out where to shop in the outlet mall, for example, you could plan it out with uh, indoor maps by Google, and I think cool. it's kind of a cool thing. Airports, same way. You know, that's if you're right. going to a strange airport and you want to kind of map that out, yeah. that's a really great – great thing to have uh you know at least ahead of time let's totally. say you're at the hotel and you want to go home and you say okay we're in detroit there's some airports man i get it seems like i've yeah. I've walked a mile i still haven't got to my gate yeah right? yeah so absolutely. it's always kind of nice to know it's a maze. <laughs> so check out Check out uh, map, uh, indoor maps for your desktop that's a really good tip from social greg today so excellent anyway, greg so what uh, do we what got we... coming up man hey well we got sf new tech <laughs> sf new tech uh, as you know uh, Nerd Soccer is a sponsor of SF New Tech, right. and uh, let's let's go down the 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 on eleven twenty seven, uh, which is uh, do, 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 I guess yeah next week sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be Belly Up with Gree, G R E E, the the famous Japanese um, social game maker. Cool. Um, they'll be at Harlot from five to nine, and you could you know talk to recruiters and learn how to score your dream job in mobile gaming. Excellent. So the admission's free, and the beer is free. So check it out at Harlan, uh, downtown San Francisco. And what we got up on uh, Wednesday, December 5th, we said get ready for some awesome extravaganza of amazing inventions and scientific feats of wonder. So it's going to be a hardware um, type of event, which is really different for – uh, SF New Tech, so it's going to be kind of interesting how they how that looks like on my camera uh, right. uh, when we're streaming that. And let's see, you know, let's see what they have. Uh, they have some pretty interesting uh, things. Uh, so hopefully they'll bring they'll bring the real hardware, unless it's you know it's too big to bring. But it'd be kind of cool if they did that. Yeah. And then on twelve eleven we have the holiday party. So uh, Adolfo and I go there every year and. Uh, yeah, I guess we get drunk, drunk out of our gourds, but not, <laughs> not as much. Uh, but, uh, you know, DJ Jer Derek will be there. <laughs> I don't know nice. who he is, but he sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like a party, man. Yeah, there will be giveaways from, from Microsoft and others. So uh, I want to score a tablet, man. I want to score a tablet. Yeah. 
So what do we have next on your uh, your end of the spectrum there? Hey man, we are uh, you know we're press, we're media covering a great event called MacWorld here in San Francisco. We're stoked, woohoo! Yeah, so it's the MacWorld iWorld, the ultimate iFan event, uh, January thirty one uh, through February nice. February second of uh, twenty thirteen next year, early next Grand year. Groundhog's Day uh, at Moscone Center <laughs> West, San Francisco. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, all kinds of fantastic events. It's gonna be Tech Talks, Live Zone, Expo Hall. Uh, there's oh, gonna man. be a headliner. Little Feet's gonna be head- headlining uh, the event. Uh, so all you. Uh, Mac and iOS developers and Mac heads and heck, if you're even into Androids and PCs, come check it out. You'll probably learn something and find something you like. So remember, January 31 through February 2nd here in San Francisco, Macworld, iWorld event. Make sure to check it out. I love we it. We will be oh, there. Man. I, we're we're going to be tired. We're going to bring yeah, our portable yeah. equipment and do some interviews. We'll be really tired that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. No, so if you guys days, want to so. talk to us about if you're a developer, you're going to be presenting there or anything like that, make sure to get a hold of us, you know. And yes. uh, Adolfo at nerdsocket.com and social Greg at nerdsocket.com. That's so. right. And if you want to contribute to the podcast, uh, do so by using the hashtag NRDSTK, and we'd be happy to incorporate your story into the show. And also uh, check us out at nerdstalker.com or, uh, you know, better yet, just go to the Easy. iTunes and subscribe to the i the uh, podcast, the audio, or the video feed and give us a five star rating. That'd be awesome. Check us out on YouTube if you'd like. Also, do a Nerdstalker TV search and uh, also give us a, you know, give us a thumbs up there as well um where else greg all over the place stitcher uh, i could go on and on uh, 24 by 7 channel on uh, nurse Hoggart, uh the, which is uh, i broadcast tv so uh we're all over the place and yeah, then man. also you can catch our, our our new uh vidcast podcast which is called social time, social with, time. Uh, me and so- social media sean. Show, sean charles sean we love you man <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The general just saluted yes, you, man. Yes, so. <laughs> the generalissimo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I say every week, you know, uh, Social Time, fantastic show, people. Anyone out there, in, is just remotely, if you're interested in uh, social media or, or even if you're a hardcore professional, you want to watch this show. You're going to learn a lot. And these guys are fantastic together, Greg and Sean, on the show. So, yeah. Make sure just to like, check you, that and out. Just <laughs> like right. you and I. Just like you and I, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, where can they catch you, man? Yeah, you guys can check me out, as Greg said before, Adolfo at NerdStalker.com if you want to uh, email me. Or, uh, yeah, at NerdStalker on Twitter. How about you, Greg? Yes. Oh, you catch me at uh, socialgreg at NerdStalker.com uh, by email and emailing me anytime, PR people or anybody, so I can do interviews of you. Or you can <laughs> reach me at uh, on Twitter at, on social, at socialgreg. So, anyway, uh Great show again, my friend. Great to talk Uh, to you, Greg. Love doing it with you. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. You guys be careful out there. Happy holidays, everyone. See you soon. Ruh, 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 (laughs) ruh. Wow. This is really out of date. (laughs) Totally hosed you. I love it. You totally hosed me, man. Totally hosed uh... him.